You need my temp, right? Go ahead, no. That's important. It's a part of part of our, our safety protocol here in in Cambridge. They require us to log all the temperature of everyone every single day. Uh, and Brian's Brian's the temperature master. Brian and I were just t actually talking in the office about this. I wish we had plywood this wall and painted it black before they installed this. Um, and now we're looking at this as, you know, one option is to obviously cut this and redo it. We're gonna get the HVAC guys out, back out here. Uh, and that's gonna cost us money, but we're trying to consider a couple different options as far as how we make this neat. Um, Cause it, it's neat in, in, in sense, but where all the pipes go in the wall, it kind of, it, it kind of clumps together. Um, so we're just looking on ways to improve that without having to redo this entire thing. So I just wanted to put eyes on this before they go any further. But I think Brian has a pretty good idea where this stuff is gonna kind of tuck back and he can actually build a secondary plywood um, wall that hides all of this stuff. So obviously gonna dress up the insulation. Um, but it's kind of tricky, like some things like this. See this, Doug, like this is outside the wall. So I think regardless of what we do, some of these are gonna have to be cut and redone because I mean, that's just gonna be in the way unless we pad that wall out further and then cap encapsulate that. Um, and one of the concerns is padding the wall out and putting a piece of plywood in front is that someone goes to screw something in and they hit one of those lines and we're kind of screwed. So it's always things like this that, you know, we look to improve and try to catch beforehand, but it's, it's nearly impossible to catch everything. Uh, but I would say this is probably the last time we'll, we'll miss this. Um, guys are working on these whisper clips. So we've talked about this a lot is essentially you can kind of see this clip here gets screwed to our stud over our, our vapor barrier. And this here is essentially just a single point of contact to the stud and then our resilient channel will clip in. This is a piece of resilient channel. It's on these whisper clips. What the, the, essentially what you're trying to do is as sound hits that wall and hits, you know, is that transfers through our jet board into here, you're then isolating it from the stud even more with this quote unquote whisper clip. And what that does is help prevent the, the vibrational, I don't know if that's a word, vibrational sound going into the metal stud. And then on top of here, we'll actually have two layers of jip. The first layer being the sound core drywall. And then the, the second layer being a blue board, which will then get our single coat plaster. You guys always ask why we plaster. That's just what we do here in Massachusetts. So this will actually be um, troweled across the entire surface, plastered completely smooth. It's a really large space, really large height walls here. The guys are gonna be using big straight edges, as you've seen in our other projects, to get these walls ultra, ultra flat. So with the skylights above here, when, when, when it's really sunny out and washing this wall, we're getting a nice consistent wall and we're not getting waves in it. Um, we just don't do drywall. It's just not something that we, we really ever do. I don't think I've ever done drywall, to be honest. Essentially, you're gonna take that, you're gonna slide that in, and then you can clip it in. Can do that again, Doug? So, it's a high hat, resilient channel. This again has that spring. Put it on, and then it's connected. The guys have obviously detailed up any seams, any cracks. You know, I'm excited to see what this, what we do for. Um, we'll run a blower door test to see how tight we made this space. But again, this is to be able to control the the quote unquote climate within this home. Uh, without worrying about what's in the stud cavities or in adjacent homes. Um, these two areas, I don't know, do we have... What's up, guys? What's up, Nick? How we doing? Good. Um, so, I don't know if you guys have seen this in a previous... I, I think, actually, you'll see this in a future revealed. Uh, these are actually going to be plastered in bookcases, uh, similar to what we did over at our uh, Back Bay project, Project 142, is this will be an MDF um, side. 
and then you'll actually have a uh, stop bead which will allow us go to go from MDF to plaster seamlessly so when this is all painted it will look like it's all plastered and then we just have floating shelves so you can see how it's just a floating shelf detail and it looks as though the plaster wall returns back into it but in fact that's going to be an MDF uh, carcass um, this is actually one of my favorite views of this uh, continued with whisper clips up here you can see these have been padded out for our stair lighting the guys have done a great job getting everything taped up um, it's a little time consuming getting all these clips on especially making sure they're nice and straight but once they're in that resilient channel should go in pretty pretty quickly looks like Brian from Coleman is running some conduit so yeah all the ceiling stuff uh, you can see the guys from Coleman everything's conduit so um, I know Brian's worked with them on layout and making sure everything's in the right spot. And then we'll come back and then the painters will actually paint this uh, to match the ceiling color. Uh, if you guys remember way back in the beginning of this job, th there was actually conduit everywhere. So it was important to, to make sure that the layout and everything was nice and neat. Uh, because looking up, it's, you know, we want it to look intentional. Uh, you can see even in this location here, Doug, where this rolls out and then follows our girder and everything's inboard. So when you're down in that main common space, you're not looking up at conduit and everything is then jumped up onto the wood beams uh, and then tying into the ceiling. See, uh, finished ceiling height. Did we, this? Yeah, right underneath LVL. I gotcha. Yeah. So yep. you can see guys that like some of this duct work is completely like as low as it possibly can be. You know, if I take this level here, right? On that hat track, your board is gonna be going straight across what Cooper's doing, he's got this here to brace, and then on the opposite side, you're gonna have another piece of hat, hat track that catches on here. But it's a little bit of, it's a game of uh, a little origami, yeah. because we have, uh, what he's doing there is cutting a void for uh, a future recess light. We got a sprinkler head here, we got the line sets kicking up. So it's, you know, we knew going into this, it was gonna be tight and kind of a little design build in place. Uh, and thankfully it seems to be working out. I don't want to jinx anyone, but um, and this is pro this is probably our, our biggest uh, concern here. That's a big void. Again, you're you're essentially that's where your board is. So I think we got to work with the, the duck guys, and I think we're modifying something here in order for us to span our board across this, but also somehow secure it up. Um, and then right here, you actually have cabinetry, so it's going to be this area. Uh, that doesn't have as much support. Uh, but we did talk about adding a support actually through the center of the duct uh, and then up to the structure. Did we, did we determine what we were doing with that? Yeah, I, th I think, um, well, no, no, we didn't. So no, we didn't. <laughs> we're, uh, we're working on an idea, which we're not sure if we can get like wood up and in there and kind of build um, something that we can attach the hat track to it's kind of at this level and yeah. then put it back up, tape it back up and kind of have something marked out for where maybe they could just like board right to that or, yeah. or whatever. But it's funny, we did a job in the financial district in Boston yeah. and all the all the drywall was screwed to all the ductwork. Really? Every, like the whole the whole ceiling was all ductwork above and all the drywall was screwed to it. So maybe uh, I'm not maybe. saying it's right. right. It's just it was done. Um, but I think, yeah, I think in this case, if we can get some sort of structure above the duct. Uh, yeah, yeah, inside the duct, kind of, really our plan is to just take out the whole bottom portion of this duct, build some type of structure. If it can be wood, it'll be wood. If it can be metal, it'll be metal. Right. And then we'll have the threaded rod or wire to hold that, hold that level and something that can support our ceiling. Cool. Right above. Tight up here. So what we got going on up here let me shut my flashlight off. Um, this is one of the only cavities that we have. And we actually, if you look over there to the right, um, we actually added that space above that uh, elevator lobby area. Um, we have an air handler over there that supplies primarily the lower space as well as some here. But we also have an air handler and an ERV right here. Uh, and this ERV is the only one for this unit, basically bringing in fresh air um from outside and exchanging all the stale air from the inside but i mean needs to be neatened up a little bit obviously they're not done um but it's just tight man there, there's 
your, your air handle is here, your EIV is here, everything, that air handle is suspended from the ceiling on isolation so we don't get vibration. This one's sitting on uh, isolation feet here um, and you just kind of origami of, of uh, some, some duct work, primarily hard pipe with obviously some uh, flexible, this is feeding the supply supply here for the for the bathroom for the bedroom and then this right here is actually a, uh, a window to capture the light from the skylight into this bedroom here but if you look this kind of all lines up with each other as one big opening and i think what we talked about is that's going to be a window and we talked about possibly making this a mirrored door uh, so it looks as though it's all uh, plate glass uh, obviously this being clear this being a mirror and reflecting the, the wall back from there. Um, alternatively, I think this will end up being a painted panel uh, that sits flush with the plaster and drywall around it. Um, and I know Mike is working with plastered in grills for everything, so it's nice and neat. So in the areas that we can't hide, supply or return, uh, it, it's at least a nice plastered in four by 10 grill uh, or larger where uh, necessary. Uh, we're actually trying out a new pocket door hardware in this one. Uh, it was recommended to us, so we're going to give this one a shot. Uh, we'll see how this one goes, but it's nice. It's actually all aluminum frame uh, compared to some of the steel studs that we've used in the past. So excited to see how that shapes up compared to what we've used in the past. So second air handler is up here. Also distribution box. What the distribution box allows is essentially, I want to simplify this. Um, these are Mitsubishi compact units. Uh, up on the roof deck, we previously had three outdoor units sitting up on the roof, not the roof deck, on the roof line. Um, now we have one. So we've reduced the amount of outdoor units by two. And that one unit supplies three air handlers in the space go, going into a distribution box, which then converts that one line set to the three line sets needed for our air conditioning on these units. Um, and, and heat actually, not just air conditioning, it's a heat pump setup. So this right here will get a, uh, a completely flush access panel. And I believe we're actually gonna be using this uh, for our return. Um, I don't see that duct work, it might, be, it, it might be up top here, but this will be a plastered in uh, access panel with a return grill in it. So again, we're, we're simplifying and, and making less penetrations through the ceiling uh, and that will look nice and clean. And this is centered right above our elevator, uh, which goes to a one stop down below. And that was designed so, you know, as uh, the client ages in place, doesn't always have to use the stairs, has the option for the elevator. That's a good update for our project 170 here in Cambridge. We're gonna head into Boston, check in on our Back Bay project. So this is actually uh, what I was talking about over in Cambridge is this is that detail where these boxes were built in our shop, all MDF. Uh, we epoxied this stop bead right here and then we plastered from corner bead over to that stop bead. So there's a buried flange here. Uh, and then this will get all wall paint, wall paint, wall paint. Uh, so when you open that up, it looks like it's just all monolithic, uh, which is really, really cool looking. You know, previously what we've done is we've had essentially a corner bead and then we put a cabinet here. So you have the three quarter inch plywood uh, and then that becomes like a cock joint, uh, which works really well for the door when the door shuts as a stop, but it doesn't lend itself to, uh, you know, fitting very well because you're sliding into a plastered opening and there has to be some wiggle room. This is really clean looking. So we're actually, I believe, yeah, we're utilizing a stop down here. This is for the door. This secondary, so um, plywood is actually for our half inch reveal because our door will stop at the bottom here. The door will hit that, it'll hit here, and then we're gonna put a, a stop at the top here as well. That will keep the door nice and, and straight. Um, but man, seeing that plaster in it looks really nice. And you can see here we get all our concealed hinges. We have you know just enough meat for us to, to tie into, and then this floats right by it. Uh, we were concerned with this being a weak point, but it's a really short distance where everything else is epoxied. So that should that should work out well. You can see on both sides. Those look awesome. 
Those look awesome. So last time we were here, Doug, we, this wasn't, none of this was plastered. So this has all been plastered. They got the oak nosing in, which buries the remaining of the, the remaining portion of the glass. And then we have that quarter inch reveal between plaster and, and uh, white oak. That looks really slick. I'm holding, we're holding him up. Uh, last time we were here also, this was a, a screw up. Um, so what we've done is the cabinet installer moved everything down. We reduced that filler down to really nothing, uh, which we don't, which is fine because there's no hardware on it. Everything is servo driven on here. So this right here, it's tight tolerances, but it's never gonna hit because there's no hardware. So now this, this is not set, but now the, the fridge does open. Um, and I, I can't remember if I said it last time, but so this is a Miele refrigerator, which when the door opens, it actually, it's, it, uh, it, when it swings, it actually swings outside of the 36 inch opening, where like a, a, a sub-zero actually, when it swings, the door stays within that 36 inches. Um, and just reference, like the door, will no, like no longer hit that beam once it's set. A Sub-Zero would have never hit the beam, but like I said, the hinges are different on this one. So everything had to be shifted. So that's been corrected. They've ordered new fillers. So that filler will grow. You got a coat of primer on a lot of these walls up here, which is nice. You can kind of start to see the all the work that's went into the plaster and really how flat everything is, which is nice. A little mishap here, had to do a patch. Unfortunately, ripped one of those uh, one of those outlets actually off the blue board, pulling some wires through it when we we actually installed heat melt out here, Doug. The, um, I keep saying Doug, like I'm talking to only you. It's only, it's, a, it's just you and me, right? So all those pavers actually have a heat melt system underneath it, so in the winter time, uh, it will trigger on and make sure everything melts. There's roof drains below that. Everything will go down. That way you're not building up snow and ice against these doors, thus getting any issues with, um, you know, water intrusion through this door. So that was, uh, that's a nice add there. Uh, in here, they've got a couple coats of the Devline product. This is not the final coat. This is actually still like a pretty rough texture. Uh, and the final texture will be a real smooth plaster. And then in here, they actually got our shelves installed. Uh, and you can see a piece of ram board here is tucked between shelf and this stone. That's a pretty traditional reveal. When we're talking about dissimilar materials, we're separating it by the thickness of a piece of ram board plus some red tape. Um, so when that's all pulled out, the stone will just float right by those shelves. Uh, but these are all weedy, you know, weedy panels uh, adhered in, plastered. They're not going anywhere unless you take a sledgehammer to it, I guess. And the guys always do a really good job protecting everything. This is a glass panel been wrapped in not only foam, but plastic. And so it looks like one or maybe uh, two more coats of, uh, of the Devline product. If you guys remember way back when we installed these post bases to our roof deck and then patched our rubber, uh, rubber roofing around it. And then from there, uh, our steel guy actually made us these posts with these cross braces. And that's essentially getting us the height and connecting it down to our deck. But what we need to do is we needed to add wood blocking on here so we can install our EPE. So the carpenters have installed pressure treated um, two by four, screwed it into our steel post, and then they've wrapped it in the zip flashing tape. Main reason for this is actually just so you, it's all black. Uh, once the EPE is installed, a lot of that gets covered up, uh, but it's also protecting any of the uh, pressure treated uh, from, you know, unnecessary moisture getting into it. And then you can see over here on this side, this is the first wall that they've completed. Uh, exposed screws, they're actually uh, using this tile spacer. Um, actually grab one of them. If I get one out. Doug, I think my grip strength is, is, is failing me. So they're just plastic, plastic eight inch spacers keeping the deck um, evenly spaced all the way up and snapping a line and then keeping those screws nice evenly spaced. I uh, went with an exposed screw just for uh, simplicity with the stainless screws, nice evenly spaced. It actually gives it a really nice look. Um, and then in future, 
We actually are having a custom stainless steel kitchen made here, which will be cabinetry, a grill, a refrigerator, storage, trash, things like that. Uh, and then over there, um, you can actually see the gas pipe sticking up. We have a custom uh, concrete fire pit being made, which will sit back there. Uh, we'll have an outdoor TV, some furniture, etc. cetera. Uh, but really this is, you know, the step one in what we need to do to complete our scope up here. Um, I actually didn't mention it, but we had these fabricated off site as well. And these attach to the same brackets. So this is a one piece that's got craned up, installed. This protects obviously from this side, but this had to be approved by the Back Bay Association to make sure that from the, the mall, which I found out that that strip of grass is called the mall. So the Commonwealth Mall, from the view up there, this, you know, this is in the line of sight when you look down. So this had to be approved accordingly. Uh, same thing with what they could see up on this roof deck. Uh, we're gonna leave the epay natural. So over time, this will silver to a really, uh, this will discolor to a really pretty silver. Um, and it won't be as, um, you know, it won't contrast as much as it is right now with this natural wood tone. Uh, and then with the stainless in front of it and the gray pavers on the, on the patio, all of this is gonna work out to be, uh, you know, a really nice silver and bright area to, to hang out in. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is, this is really our biggest, one of our biggest folks is taking advantage of the nice weather up here. And, you know, uh, oh, I told you guys I wanted to show you this plaster detail, so let's do that. Um, and just, I, wa I wanna address this because I'm thinking about it as I'm sitting here with my mask. A lot of you guys have been commenting about me wearing a mask on site. A lot of these job sites require it, number one, for the safety of our guys, but number two, in order for us to be permitted to work in the city, it is required for us to be wearing a mask, especially in the common areas of these buildings. So, you know, despite your opinions on whether or not we should be wearing a mask or not, uh, I have my opinions as well. The, the point is, is that we're gonna follow the guidelines as to what allows us to continue to work safely uh, and efficiently on our job sites. So before we take off, let's look at that plaster detail I, want, I talked about before. I had a phone call with the, the homeowners and they were like, hey, what's that seam in the ceiling for? Well, it's actually a seam in the ceiling. If you think about concrete when it's placed, you have these intentional cuts in it. So if it cracks, it cracks in a specific spot rather than sporadically. It's a similar idea here. There's two stop beads pushed up tight against each other. Uh, and this creates a, a, a straight line seam where, you know, pretty commonly you'd see a stress fracture or a stress crack. Uh, and it's, it's lined up directly in the middle of this wall. So if these two ceiling planes move independently, you're not gonna get a crack off the corner of this wall. The guys at Van Gerven uh, insisted on, which makes sense. And you know, at one point I thought we were gonna caulk it to paint, but it actually looks pretty clean uh, just as is. So let's head over to Southie, uh, their hanging board. I wanna show you guys how this board is being terminated into the skylights, which is a really important detail for me. Uh, and I believe we're also working on the exterior trim. So we'll take a look at a couple of those details uh, and then we'll go from there. A couple episodes ago, and I think in Reveal 2, we showed you guys that recessed receptacle plate um, in the side of the vanity. Well, this is actually a true fib product, but it's the suction cup to remove the plate covers. This is a tool that we could use to remove the plate cover, though it isn't a true fig, it would work just the same way. So hopefully that answers you, the question from uh, that you guys had on how we were gonna remove it. Looks like a little camera, Doug. Looks like the, the highlight logo we got. Doug, that's, or Doug, everyone that's watching this video. <laughs> this seam here. Right, right here, so there's three windows. So this is basically roof line to, to plumb wall. This right here is set at a certain elevation all the way around. So when we do our window sill, this in here, it's gonna be a painted MDF. In the bathroom, it's gonna be a stone. Uh, but that stone is designed so that, I believe it's bottom of stone hits that seam uh, in every location. It was something that we're kind of, for, for, for technical terms, fudging up and down to make sure that that seam hits the stone uh, right where we want because I think it's just a, a nice relationship rather than you know what you might see back of the window that 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 reveal at the window especially being a black window can kind of fluctuate up and down um, but that relationship will be key uh, from an aesthetic standpoint so yeah that's good and it, it, I don't know if you caught this earlier but this right here is the screw zone 
so we, we had a modern fireplace in here. This is, uh, we, we actually piped up a heat release up top, so most of the heat will come out and be dispersed up top. And this cube, I'm, I'm calling it a cube. This cube will be a lime plaster. And we have a floating stone shelf that goes below, below here. I believe it's a soapstone material, right? And then the guys in the shop actually fabricated a custom walnut bookcase that will get installed here with, um, that will actually get plastered in with the, the lime plaster. So Luke's on site getting everything prepped for plaster. Board's hung. I actually wanted to show you guys the, the skylight details. Talked about this before, but now you can kind of start to see what we were going for. And you have this really tall wall and you get this really dramatic continuation all the way up to the glass. Uh, and the guys actually frame this in a manner that you don't see any of the skylight frame. A lot of times you see the wood cladding on the inside. You don't see it here. We've actually ran the board all the way up to the glass. Uh, you can actually see the protection tape up there. But what they're gonna do is they're gonna add a stop bead at the very end of that blue board, right against that glass, or right below that glass. So this is just white right up to sky and you don't see any relationship between, you know, there's almost no, you almost can't tell it's glass because you don't see the frame of the glass, uh, which makes a really nice detail. Uh, and then the light pouring down, you can see the light starting to pour across this new staircase that we've installed. And then the second skylight's in here in the bathroom. It's the same thing. When you look up, if you didn't see that sticker up there, you'd almost not know that there was a piece of glass there. And of course, it's a cloudy day, so it just looks like white. It's really beautiful when it's just a blue sky and you walk in here and it's literally the first thing you see. It's gonna be centered over our restored uh, clawfoot tub. And then you walk right into the shower. And this, the shower is other, you know, in a, a, very much kind of like an alcove, but with that skylight and that natural light, it really helps fe make this, the shower feel a lot larger. Um, and I know you guys have asked about how we're gonna combat natural light. So there you go. Another thing, so we got this pocket door in. Uh, I'm actually gonna give Luke a hand getting that out of here so it's out of the way for the plaster. But it's funny, you look at this and that pocket door is obviously, I'm gonna use my, my trusty hands, right? Here's the width of the pocket door. I'm sticking out. But if you guys remember, we actually framed this down a little bit to keep this coplanar throughout the whole space. We actually have enough in that cavity so the door goes all the way over and it actually goes into some of that cavity before the insulation. Uh, and I was actually kind of worried about this being a tight space, but you know, I'm six foot and uh, you know, I'm not at this, I'm centered in the room and you know, my head doesn't feel cramped in here. Most of the time you're probably not standing that far back uh, in, in the toilet room. But that's enough of that. Really just prepping for uh, blue board. Uh, what Luke's actually doing is, you know, we use this red tape to, to protect any finishes. Uh, and he, this stringer is a structural stringer for the staircase, but it's also our finished stringer. So he's got some plastic going on, protecting that top edge. So when they plaster, they don't damage that edge. It does get a, bit, a base cap detail. Otherwise, we don't want it to get damaged during, during plaster. Luke, is your shirt inside out? So it looks like you're wearing a black shirt. Awesome. <laughs> so underneath this staircase, we actually, the outside uh, skirt board is already installed and they're gonna plaster to it. They'll basically stop bead right to that. You see the curve down there that they'll blend into the old plaster. This goes up. Uh, work in progress, guys. So this right here is this like compounding curve. So obviously what looks like a mess right now will be continued to be worked on, filled in and then we're gonna actually metal mesh that entire bottom side, uh, and then it'll be built out with a coat of uh, likely Durabond prior to doing our finished coat of plaster. Um, so it's cutting these strips and figuring out how to make that compound angle. You see all the score marks in it, um, but ideally we're basically just creating some sort of substrate to then attach our metal mesh with our Durabond, and then that will get blended out with our plaster all the way around. Once this is done, we give them this staircase back and we utilize the back staircase and we're right into finishes on this project. So this is a, a, an exciting point. Luke, yeah. have a good weekend, man. Yeah, you too. That's it for this week's episode of Site Visit. Appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, we'll check you guys out next week. Make sure you stay tuned tomorrow for another episode of Revealed. Uh, and for those asking, I know some of you guys don't care what I'm wearing, but apparently some of you guys do. Wearing the same jeans. This week I'm wearing my Red Wing Weekenders, and these are comfortably collared polos. 
They're available on Amazon. Uh, someone actually local to South Boston uh, created this company for a more fitted polo. Um, yeah, and they were branded by Upstate Merch. See you guys next week.